Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts, wherever and whenever we may be, be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week I'll take us on a little bit of what may be a break from the extended discourse that Jesus has given us on the bread of heaven and the bread of life for these last number of weeks. Alongside it, week by week, we've also been traveling with St. Paul through his letter to the Ephesians, which is one of my favorite of Paul's letters in that it is one of his most encouraging letters. He spends a good chunk of his time encouraging our ancient spiritual ancestors in their own ability, in their own journey, in their own struggle and wrestling with their faith, and gives them food and nourishment to continue in that journey, which has meaning for us just as we do the same in our own life and in our own times. But St. Paul, as we know, if we've spent any amount of time with him, is challenging in what it is that he offers at the very same time. And in our brief section from Paul's letter to the Ephesians this morning, there are a couple of things that he offers that I find both particularly challenging and also particularly nourishing. The first thing that he offers that I find particularly challenging is he encourages the Ephesians and us to understand what the will of the Lord is. I've been wearing this collar around my neck for the better part of 10 years now. And in this work over that period of time, I find it no easier to discern the will of the Lord today as it did the first day I wore this collar. And I don't expect that it will be any easier 10 years from now or 20 years from now or at any other time that I may walk this earth. The other thing that Paul tells the Ephesians that I find difficult and challenging, he encourages them to be filled with the Spirit. Easier said than done for us in our lives day to day. Something that we most definitely desire, both of these things, to discern, to be able to discern the will of the Lord and to be filled with the Spirit are things that I think every single one of us would love to have in our lives from day to day, but have a difficult time accessing them and finding our way to them. But as Paul usually does, he also offers us in this same small text a couple of practices that I remark upon, that I make note of, that are, have been helpful in my own journey to find my way to whatever extent I can to both discern the will of the Lord and to be filled by the Spirit. And an excellent virtue and bit of good luck for us as a community tied to this place where I am sitting now, here on the island of St. Bart's and this church in particular. These are two practices that I'll lay out, or that Paul has already laid out, and I'm going to illuminate or remind us of here for a couple minutes, that we who have been tied to this place can return to and think about our time here as a way to find our way back to these things that we so desire. The first thing that Paul says in this first line is that he says that we should make the most of the time. We should make the most of the time that we are given. This is something that he tells us is a way to be careful in our lives, not careful in the way of avoiding things that are difficult, but being thoughtful and meaningful about our lives. We should make the most of the time that we have. This is a place, no matter whether you get to spend, as uh, my wife Shelly and I do, 10 days or so or 12 days at a time, or many of you who have made this your spiritual and otherwise home for months or years at a time know that there is something about this place in particular that makes you want to make the most of the time in its beauty, in its quiet, in its peace. All of these things, and just the, this is now my wife Shelly and I's fourth time coming to this island. And each time we find ourselves enraptured by the desire to make the most of our time here. And that that is something that we encounter in nearly everyone we meet when we come to this island. You surely know this wherever and whenever you are, which is surely apart from this island by the time you're hearing my voice on this. Shelley and I have been remarking on this trip about the ways that 
it being our fourth trip, that each time we've had a desire to make the most of our time here, but each time that has meant something different. And so coming to this place, I think, and having it as a part of our lives is actually a way for us to have a practice and a window of what it is to make the most of our time. Surely you have had this same experience from visiting this place and making it a part of your life. And it is an approach to our days that we can take with us to all the other places in this creation that we may make our way and may make our home. We can draw upon the strength of the time that we have spent here and apply that to know that how can we make the most of our time and be flexible in that, that that may be something that is different for us from season to season, from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. But if we make it our express intention to make the most of our time, that we will allow ourselves to be present in a way that will allow us to discern what the Lord's will is in our midst. Now, the second thing that Paul commends to us is at the very end of our passage today, which says, Paul writes that we should give thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. Now, He says, it makes it clear that it's not just in one time or one place. We should not just be grateful when we spend our time in a place as beautiful and peaceful and as inspiring as the island of St. Bart's. But that when we get this time, it is a laboratory for us in places and times where it can be easier to be grateful for those things that surround us, to be reminded of that as a practice that we can take out with us wherever we go. I, at times in my life, and maybe you have as well, have kept a gratitude journal. I've spent years where I would get to the end of each day and write down at least three things for which I was grateful each and every day. And in the years that have followed, when I've lapsed from that practice or turned away from it in a different season of spiritual practice, I still go back to and remark upon the things that I found gratitude in that are sometimes surprising. I would not ever have thought or expected those to be reasons to be grateful and reminded me of things to be aware of in the time that I'm reading them weeks, months, years later. The great medieval mystic Meister Eckhart wrote at one time that if we should have one prayer to offer up to God, it should be thank you. If there is nothing else that we can offer, if we find ourselves stuck in our desires to meet God in our lives or to find meaning in our lives or anything else, if we find ourselves stuck spiritually or in any way in our lives, if there's one thing that we can count on, it is that if we practice gratitude, we will find our way to the meaning and purpose and substance of our lives, which is to say that we will find our way back to where God is active in our lives and in our midst. So, dear friends, it is fitting that as I prepare to conclude this fourth trip of mine to St. Bart's, and in that experience of preparing to say goodbye, that I feel overwhelmed and filled up with gratitude for this place and for this community that has invited me and my wife back again and again and that for which we are so grateful. It is this sense of gratitude that will prepare us as we we will return to our lives back in Texas in a few days and to take gratitude as well in the knowledge that we are connected to you as this community that is scattered throughout the world and yet united in the ways that making the most of this place and expressing and living into our gratitude for it. Bring us closer to the knowledge and experience of God and of God's love in our lives each and every day, wherever we may find ourselves. So let us take comfort from that. If nothing else, we have that experience of being drawn together by what we have shared of the knowledge of God and of God's love from this place that we can carry with us to the farthest ends of this earth and beyond. So may God bless you wherever you may be. And let us hold in our hearts this day and always 
those things for which we are grateful, remembering that those things are gifts that come directly from God. And let us take that strength and carry it out into our life, allowing us to make the very most of it, trusting that if we can do those two things, we will be filled up with the Spirit and experience the miracle of what it is to know and to be able to feel and discern God's movement around us, calling us to be God's beloved children. I would love to know those things for which you are grateful. And if you have the ability on this feed, wherever you're watching it, to take a moment and share below what what it is you are grateful for. And that will be a sign and a reminder for this community, wherever we are, that we are united in God's love, for which we are profoundly and forever grateful.